Joining me in the studio is Martin Widdick, uh, CEO of Roland Berger Strategy Consultants. We discuss investment risks, opportunities, and strategy in Nigeria today. Thank you so much, Martin, for joining us on the show today. Well, first of all, let's talk about why you're here in Nigeria. I know you're on this, um, on this visit, and you have opened an office in Nigeria. Talk to us a bit about you know, the rationale for that, more mm -hmm. so from the perspective of an EU country. Yeah, what do you know? We are first movers always in emerging markets. We went to Brazil in 84 as a company. We went to China in 94. We are now 250 consultants in China. We're number two in China. And we are in Africa already also for, for a long time. We are in North Africa, based in Morocco. We are in South Africa. And it was kind of a natural move also with the development of these emerging markets, of these next level markets, and we clearly count mm. Nigeria as one of these markets mm. uh, to come here and to do business. And we are doing that uh, for two years now, kind of on a remote basis, for one year on a, on a fixed office basis. And it's, it's really rewarding. It's really uh, interesting. It's also an, a significant enrichment for the people. People like to do it. They love it. All right. I imagine you are involved in the banking sector. Yeah. Talk to us a bit about your thoughts on your views of the timing of M&As right now, because that's a big issue in Nigeria right now with the consolidation of the sector as a result of the crisis which we've had and, of course, the way the central bank has tried to resolve things. Give us your thoughts on the execution risks involved yeah. going forward now. Yeah, first of all, uh, M&A timing is always wrong or right. You never know in a, in a very specific window whether you are in the, in the real right constellation. In a long-term perspective, I think it's the right investment to go into banks now. We, the, yeah. we see financial services as the fastest growing sector of all industry sectors. For sure, you, yeah. you will see growth in consumer goods, in telco, partially also in agriculture, but financial services will be rewarding. And there's so much change needed and, and, uh, and change required that there is time for change makers, for people who buy assets now and, and uh, can transform these banks into very successful engines of growth. Mm. Of mm. Well, my, my thoughts on, mm. on the whole consolidation in Nigeria is that obviously we've had it uh, in the past, 2004, mm. 2005, mm. we had regulatory driven consolidation. But what is different about this case is that we're now having cases like what we have in Access Bank and Intercontinental mm. Bank, where what one can argue a smaller player is acquiring a bigger player. Mm. Now, for me, that comes with huge execution risks, given the size of the deals relative mm. to what we've done in the past. Yeah, that's, that's true, but it's not so unusual to have smaller players consolidating the market. If you look into the brewery sector, for example, yeah. uh, th this globally is meanwhile consolidated by small uh, breweries uh, stemming from South Africa or from uh, even Denmark, a, a little country like Denmark. Carlsberg is, is consolidating the breweries world. This is yeah. a quite normal development that very keen and courageous investors drive change and they normally drive not the simple integration of business but also uh, the implementation of new ideas. Very often little institutions have much more entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, this we can also see in our uh, business here. I mean we have entrepreneurs who want to go into this, in this country. That was mm. also one of the main intentions and I think this can also be true for this next wave of consolidation which is much more entrepreneurial driven than legacy driven or legislation uh, driven by legislation it's it's driven by entrepreneurial ideas and there i think are many entrepreneurial ideas around banking at the moment uh, especially for that country mm. okay, for the region right i hear you let's talk a bit um, more across the continent right now mm -hmm. and you know in nigeria we have challenges obviously and there will be mm -hmm. challenges in frontier and emerging markets clearly with mm -hmm. regulation with mm -hmm. uh, bureaucracy mm -hmm. give us your sense of how companies can especially the local companies mm -hmm. can approach that and for instance in nigeria we have this long-standing issue of the petroleum industry bill and mm -hmm. how that is slowing down investments mm -hmm. in that sector mm -hmm. how do you get around those kind of challenges more so if you're looking to put a lot of huge capital at work. Yeah, I think it's a little bit the local perspective because if you compare yourself with countries uh, in terms of official ratings in, 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 in doing business, so ease of business indicators, mm. you're not 
you're in the same rank like India or China. You're not on the level uh, of Eastern European countries, mm -hmm. but many of the obstacles you have in emerging markets, in Indonesia, for example, mm -hmm. which is also a next 11 country, you have the same issues. So mm -hmm. if you're an investor, you have to, to get the capabilities to cope with these issues. Mm -hmm. For sure, the country has to develop. I think it even has more to develop in areas like infrastructure, uh, uh, providing proper uh, utility, uh, uh, electricity supply, uh, water supply, or uh, 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 making traffic and logistics happen, this is even more challenge, I would mm -hmm. say, compared to other challenges than the legal environment. I would say, legally, it's much more difficult to do business in Russia than here. Mm -hmm. if, if, if from, from a really global perspective, from somebody who operates 45 offices, across the world. Mm -hmm. yeah? If we see how fast we could install an office here, that's much faster than we could do that in, uh, in Indonesia, for example. Right. Yeah, also getting money out and things like that. that, mm. that, that that's, uh, yes, there are obstacles and there's a lot of reform necessary to be on a level like Eastern European countries or uh, promising uh, uh, countries. In, in Southeast Asia around Singapore or, or, or Thailand. But if you compare yourself with the next 11 countries, I think the, the, there is more opportunities than threats in this, in this market, definitely. Right. Okay, let's talk a bit about investors coming in. Um, mm -hmm. It's estimated that by 2015 we'll see as much as $150 billion in FDI's flows mm -hmm. into Africa. Mm -hmm. Give us your thoughts about how much we can see from the EU, especially into a country like Nigeria. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really disappointing. That's something where we want to raise the flag also on our home country in Germany. We yeah. see some very first movements with a company like BASF coming back into the country. They, they decided that they're just uh, starting up again here. Uh, and you can see the people. But still, the picture, especially in Germany, and it's, it's crazy because Germany is a country which exports into all kind of emerging markets or next 11 states uh, of Africa is, is an imagination which is completely wrong. And that's, that's something where we have, uh, besides doing business here right. in the market, exploiting the market, where we said we want to raise the flag in Germany and say, listen, Africa is uh, is a market. It's, you have to see that there will be 300 million uh, people in Sub-Saharan Africa that's yeah. approximately in, in, who have a spendable income between three and five dollars a day, which is approximately the same amount you would see in 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 uh, in India in in the same in the same time. So people forget about this market, and uh, I think the most important thing is to to make people familiar with the possibilities of the market.